So I think you're going to dig this. Uh, one of the improvements in the setup we've seen already, and that was what was called the product updates. Remember when we ran through setup and it said, hey, I've just found this GDR that prevents this particular problem. Want me to patch that into your setup? Okay, that is part of what's called product update. So let's kind of talk about this new feature here. Let me come over here, make it a little smaller. So product updates, it's a new feature. I guess it came out in, was it 2008? One of the later 2008 versions or 2008 R2, uh, but it's been made more obvious here in 2012. Uh, and they replace kind of the concept of slip streaming uh, that we have here. Um, so the, th these are really pretty simple. Uh, when you run setup the, to install your SQL Server, when you run setup, Microsoft uh, has set it up so that product updates can go actually through Windows Update, Microsoft Update, and it can tell that there are particular packages available, hotfixes, service packs, et cetera, and it can then integrate those into the setup process. So instead of installing SQL Server, having to possibly reboot, and then coming back and then installing your hotfix, it simply slipstreams it, streams it right into the installation, and at the end of the installation, you have an updated and patched SQL Server, okay? So product updates can use you know, I'll kind of go through these. You can go through, uh, it, it can use Windows Update, uh, WSUS, if you guys are using that in your enterprise. Or my favorite thing is that you can download the hotfix, update, cumulative update, et cetera, and it can actually use that. So maybe your organization doesn't let you use Windows Update, and maybe you're uh, sort of out of band when it comes to using WSUS on your SQL Server here. Uh, you need to apply a patch uh, right now uh, to an, a new installation. Uh, you can do this. You can go install Cumulative Update 1, for example, and have that installed on your system during setup by placing CU1 just simply in a local folder. Okay, so it's called product updates. Pretty, pretty simple, I think. Um, what I've done, I wanted to walk you through acquiring Service Pack 1 and Cumulative Update 1 uh, just to take two because they're not so easy. Um, while we're talking here, hopefully these will finish. If they're able to finish in the amount of time, uh, then we'll just go straight into it. Otherwise, I may kind of wipe away. Uh, this is CU1. This is Service Pack uh, number one. So looking on the Microsoft site, I've gone up, I've said, you know, my SQL Server 2012 Service Pack 1, and I go to the download page. And one of the nice things is when you do go to the download, you get this concept of the full slipstream. Notice the file size. This is an installation of SQL Server 2012 that already has SP1 slipstreamed into it. So it's already applied. You won't have to apply Service Pack 1 after you install that. Now, what I've done instead of that is gone down to the bottom and I have installed or I'm in the process of downloading SQL Server 2012 SP1 for 64 bit. I know it's kind of tricky uh, that you think this one's tricky. OK, so I went ahead and downloaded that one. Uh, let's see if we can pull up CU1 here. Um, and luckily that. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, so we go to here, cumulative update one, and I've earned some Bing rewards, yay. Uh, so uh, here we go. Uh, no, thank you, I don't want a survey. Um, CU1 for SQL Server 2012, notice the hotfix download available. So you click it, and you will be given an agree or don't agree. Uh, I've already agreed, it set a cookie on my machine. Uh, so uh, I, I don't have to do that here again. Um, but then I have to give them my email and I have to then request the hotfix. And it's kind of a trick to figure out which one of these hotfixes do you need to install here. Well, you can kind of look at the file names. Notice RTMCU1. That's my guy right there. I don't need the DAC. Okay, I don't need the DAC fix and I don't need one for Excel. So you will kind of have to dig into those uh, file names. I wish they made it easier. Uh, but they didn't. It's going through a security scan. I'll tell you what, we'll let it finish its thing and we'll come back and we'll do uh, the installations here uh, and do our product updates with CU1.
Okay, downloads finished, security scan, all that stuff. Uh, it's downloaded both of these to the downloads folder. You can kind of take a look. Uh, one thing that you'll notice is that CU1 is a zip file. Okay, there is actually a .exe appended to both of these. I have it set to hide the extensions for known file types right now. Uh, so SP1, uh, CU1 here. Let me show you how to do this, how to do the product update. We'll use CU1 just because it's half the size and we'll go a little bit faster here. Uh, so I take my file, I go place it somewhere and I'll use a C drive and I'll put it here. Okay, and I need to extract the files here. So go ahead and uh, extract. Okay, so where do I wanna put them? And you can use the dot, dot says current folder, uh, if you didn't know that. So here it's extracting the hotfix. And when it's done, it's going to actually be pretty fast. Uh, let's do this. Um, we'll let it finish up here. And let's write, there are three steps. Uh, come on. It's unzipping. I seem to have hit a snag here. There we go. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so there are three steps to integrating product updates. Okay. Step one, download. Okay. Step two, extract to a folder if necessary, okay, your service pack one doesn't need to be extracted here, your CUs will. Uh, and then step three, run install with the update source. Okay, spelled it wrong, okay. So update source, you're gonna have to actually go to the command line, you're going to have to run setup.exe and we're going to have to tell it we want to install and that our product update source is from what? It's from the folder from step number two, okay? It's it, it's three steps, it's super, super easy. So I installed it here to CU1. So now let's go to find my, where's my computer? Uh, I need to mount my SQL Server. And it should become the G drive like it has. Notice the setup, okay? So now I can just go to the command prompt, okay? And you can do it from run if you want to. So now I need to change to G. Okay. Set up. And you want to say action slash action equal install. And you want to say slash update source equal C. CU1. Okay. And it's going to run the setup. And we'll kind of play around. I'll go through and do the product key and everything. And you'll be able to see, bam, it's right there. Uh, let's kind of let it go through its little process here. Here we go, rule check, uh, say okay. And there it is, here's our hotfix right there. Notice product updates has picked it up. This is the one that we found. If we click this, uh, click this KB, we're going to see that this is CU1 for SQL Server 2012. We say next, it goes through and it slipstreams or integrates this with our installation. Right? So pretty easy. Now that works great when you want to do a new installation. If you just wanted to patch your server, so you already have an existing one, all you need to do then is just to double click on the CU1, it will launch a setup program and it will ask you which instance that you want to patch. Okay, uh, same thing with the service pack. But this particular way is a great way to have your new installations automatically up to a specific build number.